many animals worldwide are forced to perform for human entertainment in places such as circuses, marine theme parks, bullfighting arenas and dancing bears, tourist attractions involving animals and more. Thousands die for the purpose of entertainment every year across the US, UK and Europe. Then came cat cafes. Dating back to the 90s and originating in Taiwan, the first cafe was known as the Cat Flower Garden before the cat cafes soon became a worldwide sensation. There is a total of 80 cat cafes in Japan, 58 of which are in Tokyo and gradually they are opening across the globe, resulting in 10 opening in the UK in recent years. Cat cafes sweeping the UK have caught a lot of attention, both good and bad. Charities such as the RSPCA and Cats Protection think that the increasing number of strangers wanting to pet them every day can cause high stress levels for the cats on top of being confined to one room with multiple other cats. We met with the cats of Lady Diner's Cat Emporium in Shoreditch, London. The cafe Lady Diner's Cat Emporium has been open for the past three years, so it first opened on 1st of March 2014. I think the cafe uh, benefits the public because um, it's, it's something unique and in London, London being such a busy city, it's always nice just to have a relaxed time and forget about the crazy uh, time in our, in our lives. Let me think how to phrase this. Um, So um, Lady and I has had um, a few issues, especially in the beginning with charities, um, just because being a new concept and um, with um, just the idea of, of Cat Cafe coming from, from Asia, um, there sometimes they don't care about the animals' welfare that much, um, especially um, as they tend to have to overcrowd their cafes, and um, we wanted to have something different in here. So um, it, it was difficult to make sure that everything uh, fits fits well and the cats are on come first and yeah they're they're the most important uh, things in our business here um, and I think now um, charities are viewing us in a different way um, but it's they're probably never going to approve of something like that. cat cafes are not only giving homes to unwanted cats but it's also given these cats an opportunity to meet a new family within the cafes, as they sometimes put the cats up for adoption when they become stressed out by the environment. We played with the cats at Bristol's UM Meow Cafe, which opened in 2017 after being opened just five days before we filmed with them. We opened a cat cafe because we felt that Bristol was the perfect place to open one, um, and there's a gap in the market, people love cats, so why not? We were influenced here by uh, the concept of a Zen garden, so a tranquil environment where people could come and relax and uh, enjoy cats, coffee, cake. We will have some cats for adoption here, but only if they don't settle into the environment. So, for example, uh, if the, the cats find it a little too stressful or they don't like being around people, then we're going to adopt them out. But of course, we want to try and keep the population of cats as stable as possible so they're all relaxed and, and as happy as they can be. I understand that so, mm -hmm. that's a question that's difficult to answer without saying negative. So, I, okay. I think that cat, cat, I think that cat charities who don't seem to approve of cat cafes don't often see the environment. So uh, if they came and saw that the cats were relaxed and happy and uh, comfortable around each other and around people, I think they would probably change their opinion. But often they form their opinion before they've even seen the premises. I have to admit I had a few reservations about coming, particularly given the coverage in the local news in Bristol um, and knowing that the RSPCA, Cat Protection League and other cat charities actually disapprove of cat cafes like this. Um, so I really didn't know what to expect. Um, 
it's really interesting watching other people um, interacting with the cats and perhaps seeing some people that they're not used to being around cats and so perhaps I'll leave them to sleep and they obviously want to be left alone. Um, but there are loads of toys for the cats to play with and there are some young cats around that are really sort of engaged in sort of interacting with the humans. Um, so it, being a, a sort of very full cat owner, having three cats of my own and having had cats all my life, you know, I, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about them. There are many regulations set in place for cat cafes, including hygiene, food preparation in separate environments, and the limitation of cats allowed in one cafe. We joined the cats for a Cat Pacino in Bournemouth at Paws Cat Cafe, which opened in 2017, a few weeks before our crew arrived to speak with them. Um, so I decided to come work for the Cat Cafe because one, I love cats, um, and two, I saw how important cat welfare was um, to the cat cafe, and I really agreed with it, so that's why I wanted to come here. So we opened on the 17th of February 2017. Um, we decided to go with 17th of February because that was World Cat Day. Um, so from our fundraising, we had so much support. It was overwhelming. It was really good. We, we just got really good support from it. Um, well, we, I hope that they can come along and see what we're all about. Um, I don't say I'd have an opinion as much, I just hope that we can show them, um, other charities that may not agree with us, um, that actually we're doing a good thing for the cats, because um, all our cats are rescued, so we're giving them a second home, um, and for people as well. Cat cafes are not only giving homes to unwanted cats, but it's also giving these cats an opportunity to meet a new family within the cafes as they sometimes put the cats up for adoption when they become stressed out by the environment. No, people can adopt the cats that, that live here in the cafe. Uh, we mainly give them uh, a home here as long as they're happy in the cafe. So some of them have been here since the very beginning. Others just joined us in the past year or so. Um, but usually we try to, to look at their behavior, to observe them. And if we feel like they're unhappy and they might not interact with us anymore with the other cats, uh, they might be stressed or there are any um, differences in, in their day-to-day -day behavior, then we do think about rehoming them. Sometimes we'll give them a holiday and uh, see how they, they feel, see how the other cats are feeling because they have a little hierarchy in here. So, um, yeah. This seems a good idea due to a large population of cats needing new homes. However, some cat welfare charities disagree and feel that the changing environment for the remaining cafe cats can be unsettling. We spoke with Nikki Trevoro, the behaviour manager for Cats Protection at their headquarters in Haywards Heath, to find out their opinion on the matter. Cat cafes are not a natural environment for cats. They're very likely to cause stress, and this can be for a variety of reasons. So, for example, the cats themselves, if they, are, um, if they don't know each other, if they're not related, um, they're less likely to be in the same social group. And also, by being in the confines of a cat cafe, this means that they... Um, they don't necessarily have choice over their environment, so they're going to be confined. Uh, they don't necessarily get given outdoor access. And this lack of choice and lack of ability to decide what they want to do, have control over their environment, can in itself cause stress. Cats are natural control freaks, and they, they like to be able to be um, in control. The other problems with cat cafes is that they often have a large number of cats, often in a small space. So they don't necessarily have the ability to escape one another as well. This in itself can be stressful, as cats are naturally a solitary species. Um, they don't naturally come together. So while some cat cafes may wish to um, use rescue cats or to rehome cats um, through their cat cafe, um, we wouldn't advise this. I can certainly see why people be tempted to do this. You know, it's nice to be able to help rescue cats in need. However, there are plenty of amazing rescues, such as Cats Protection, around the UK, um, already doing a fabulous job at rehoming cats. And it is a complete skill to do this. Um, it requires a lot of knowledge, um, specialist knowledge, and also um, lots in the way of infectious disease control, um, behavioural knowledge, and also things like pen design, which in itself can create a happier environment for the cats, and also take into account its health and behavioural needs.
Also, if, if like many people, you're seeking extra attention from cats, you know, you, you love cats and you want to spend time with them, we would certainly recommend um, volunteering for a rescue organisation um, such as Cats Protection. We're always looking for new volunteers. And this is a great way to spend quality time with a cat in need um, rather than, like I say, going to a cat cafe. Cats are usually rather solitary animals, preferring to avoid contact with other cats, let alone a room full which is part of the reason why this raises concerns with cat behaviour experts. We spoke with the Chief Executive of International Cat Care, Claire Besant, at their headquarters in Tisbury, Wiltshire, to widen our knowledge on the matter. Well, cat cafes are rather interesting. I think you have to realise that cat cafes aren't there for the benefit of cats. So they're not necessarily a bad thing, but you have to think very carefully how you keep cats within the cat cafe. I worry about cat cafes that are involved in rescue because really what you need in a cat cafe is a very stable group of cats. The ideal would be to have cats as kittens within a group of kittens to let them grow up together, to let them grow up in that environment. So it's a very normal thing for them. It's their usual day and you can monitor them and if they're dealing with it well then that's fine. If they're not you can rehome them to somewhere else. Now if you've got cats that have come from the rescue environment, not only have they got a background you don't really know about, you're probably bringing together groups of cats that don't know each other, which can be very stressful. And then if you remove some of those cats because people come to take them, which all sounds wonderful, it sounds like a great idea, but if they're then removed and other cats come in, that's a real source of stress for cats. I think sometimes people think that cats in a cat cafe are somehow different to their own cats. They're not. They're just ordinary cats, they're going to have days where they don't want to be patted or moments during the day when they don't want to be patted. Somebody mentioned perhaps you should have a performing animals license for it because they are slightly performing animals. I mean cat cafes have cats in them because it's good for their business. Let's, you know, there's no other way around it because I don't think it's a good place to rescue cats from. I think if you're attracting cat people in and perhaps you have pictures of rescue cats or you're getting people to think about cats and what cats need then there could be some benefits from that. Um, for the actual cats there themselves, if they're happy enough with the environment, terrific. But I don't think it's a sort of benefit or anything thing. I think it's a business. Um, hopefully it's done by people who love cats and understand them and make all those big efforts required um, to make sure it works for the cats as well. One question remains, cute or cruel?